Okay, the, the last thing I want to do is I'm going to look at a couple more uh, commonly um, used sets in analysis. Um, you are familiar with the set of rational numbers and the set of real numbers, although um, I'm going to, again, um, abuse the fact that we haven't officially defined real numbers and what we mean by the set of real numbers formally, mathematically. But I can use a property that we will all accept is true for real numbers uh, to be able to prove whether or not the set of real numbers is countable or uncountable. Now let's look at those two sets. The set of rational numbers, is that countable or uncountable? How big essentially is that set? Okay, is it listable? Can we create a list of all rational numbers? Um, and then the same is true of real numbers. Can I create a list of all real numbers? Can I do it um, in the way that I've done it before, that is create some kind of surjective mapping or bijection even um, from the natural numbers onto the reals? And those are the two questions we're gonna finish with. Okay, so theorem, and I'll go ahead and reveal the punchline with stating the theorem. Q is countable. And I'm going to do a, um, a proof by picture again that is not uh, probably rigorous enough to pass muster in all uh, mathematical journals, but it'll be good enough for us in this class. And really what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I need to, I needed to do this here and not earlier when we did the cross or the Cartesian product of natural numbers, because I need that surjective property to make this nice and easy to do. Um, but I'm also going to use almost the same procedure to list out all rational numbers that I did with the Cartesian product of uh, the natural numbers. I'm going to create a list. And just re re to recall, let's make sure we all know this. Recall a set of rational numbers is the set of all fractions where the numerator and denominator are integers. Okay, so everything that can be written as an integer over an integer is called a rational number. Now realize, this is an incredibly dense set of numbers, right? If I were looking at the real number line, notice that if this is zero, this is one. I know this point right here is one half. Between any two points, there's another rational number, right? All I gotta do to figure out what number is in between there is just add these two up and divide by two, which creates another rational number. So no matter how close you get with two points, there's always another rational number in between you. That's a property we'll actually discuss a little bit later on when we start talking about the topology of the reals way near the end of the semester. But this is what's called a dense set, that between any two points, as long as you have an ordering on there, between any two points there's another one. So no matter how close you get, there's another point inside there. So that point that I'm making here is that this is an incredibly large set, certainly not a property that's true for natural numbers. It's not dense when you talk about natural numbers, but rational numbers are dense, okay? And yet, they're still going to be, uh, for lack of a better word, and a, a word that I can use easily at a, a Christian university, that's holy. There are still some missing pieces. Even though between any two numbers is another number, there's still holes. Um, when you compare the rational numbers to real numbers. All right, so how do we know that it's uncountable? What I'm, or sorry, that it is countable. I'm gonna list out all my rational numbers, okay? In fact, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'll do a little bit of hand waving, but you'll be convinced here in just a minute. Let's start with just po positive ones, right? Zero over one, one over one, two over one, three over one, 4 over 1, 5 over 1, and so on. Okay, and then let's do um, 0 over 2, 1 over 2, 3 over 2, 4 over 2, 5 over 2, 6 over 2, and so on. 0 over 3, 1 over 3, 2 over 3, 3 over 3, 3, 3. And keep going on forever. Okay, now, I claim that this set of all numbers that I've got on the board, it's, by the way, this is not all rationals yet, 
right? In fact, this is all the non-negative rationals, right? So this set right here, if you think of it as a set, because it goes on forever this way and on forever this way, is like what I would call Q plus. Set of all um, numbers. In fact, Q plus would be without this column. Maybe I'll just erase that. I think I'll leave that there. We'll do um, that set. Now, what is Q plus? It's a set of all rationals where that's strictly greater than zero, right? Um, set of all x out of the rationals such that x is greater than zero. Right? That's, this is all positive rational numbers. Because you can get to any fraction on any, somewhere in this set. You give me any integer over integer that's positive, it's going to be in this list somewhere, somewhere in this set. Okay? Now, how do I start enumerating these? How do I start listing them? Well, I'll do the same diagonalization procedure that I did with the cross product, or the Cartesian product, I should say, of natural numbers. Here's my first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. And as a result, this will eventually hit every element in the set, so it lists or enumerates that, which means Q plus is countable. Similarly, Q minus is countable by same reasoning, right? Just put a minus sign in front of everything. You've got Q minus. And so Q is Q plus union, Q minus union, that. Countable, countable, countable. Q is countable. But the whole basis of the idea is this diagonal, diagonalization procedure that hits every element of that set. Okay? So, natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, all denumerable, countable, countably infinite. Okay? All right. Dun, 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 dun. There is such thing as an uncountable set. There is a set so large that we cannot list its elements. We cannot find a bijective mapping from in onto that set. We cannot find even a surjective mapping from in onto that set. Okay? R is uncountable. And I love this proof, by the way. This is a nifty little trick here. Um, now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to let, uh, um, we'll call it I, be a subset of R where I is the interval 0 to 1. And I'm, I'm going to be lazy and prove that this one right here is the uncountable set. But remember the theorem that said if you have a subset of another set, if the smaller set's uncountable, then the bigger set's uncountable. So if I can prove that this is uncountable, then anything that contains this whole set is uncountable. Now this again is an interval. This is not an element of or a point. All right? So this is the interval set of all x such that x is between but not including 0 and 1. And the only reason I'm leaving off the inputs is because it makes it easy to create the list. So for a contradiction Assume 0, 1 is countable. In other words, 0, 1 is the set x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on. To say it's countable means I can list out all of the elements. Okay, and just for notation, let's define x sub 1 to be. Now, because it's between 0 and 1, this is why I've chosen that interval. It starts with a 0 dot. Let's do a decimal expansion. So this is the piece that I mentioned earlier where um, we haven't defined real numbers, but we are going to um, use a property that we are familiar with about real numbers, namely that they have a decimal expansion. Okay?
So what I'm writing here is the decimal expansion of that number. Whatever x1 is, we're just assuming that it's, it's something that I can write in this list because it's countable. So I'm going to let the first one be whatever the first um, or the tenths place of x1 is. That's a11, a12, a13, a14, a15, and so on. Tens, hundreds, thousands. That's the decimal expansion. Okay. X2 is 0 0.A1 or A21, A22, A23, A24, A25, and so on. X3 is 0 0.A31, A32, A33, A34, A35, and so on. And we just keep going. Where A sub MN is an element of 0, 1, 2, up to 9. It's one of the Digits. Okay? Now, here's the trick. I claim it's impossible to include every real number this way, and that I can find a real number with a decimal expansion that is not in this list. So I've uh, supposed or assumed it's countable, and now I'm going to show that no matter what this list is, there's a decimal number out there that's not in this list, okay? So, let's create that number, which I'll call x, or actually um, y, wish to show there exists a y out of zero, one, that isn't in this list, okay? So let's let y equal, and let's call its decimal expansion b1, b2, b3, b4, and so on. Uh, we don't know what these are yet, but let's try to find them, okay? And I'm going to define b sub n as the number two that is, the digit here is number two if a n n is not equal to two, and I'm going to let it be three otherwise. Uh, in fact, I'll go ahead and write if a n n is two. Now, a n n, notice, is. So on. Now think about that for a second. Do you see the problem? Bn can't, sorry, y can't be x1 because if a11 was 2, then y has a 3 right here. But if a11 was not 2, y has a 2 there. So y differs from x1 at this place. So y is not equal to x1. In fact, y can't be equal to x2 either, because no matter what this is, at the second decimal place, it disagrees with y, right? x2 disagrees or does not match y, because that right there is a 2. If that's a 2, I mean, then y has a 3 there. And if that's a 3 or anything other than a 2, y is a 2 there. So it disagrees with that one. So in fact, it's not equal to any of those for every i. Which means that y is not in i, but its decimal expansion is, uh, sorry, its decimal expansion clearly puts it inside there, that's the contradiction, right? Y is in this set because it's zero dot and a bunch of twos and threes. It's between zero and one. It's a real number between zero and one, but it's not in this set, right? Which I called I, right? Or that's I right there. It's in I because it's in this interval, but if I were able to list it, I would be able to do this. And since I'm able to do this, but I can find a Y that's not in that list, then I can't list the reals. R is uncountable.
pruned. It's a little bit slick and a little bit in the back door, but it's absolutely a valid proof because we assume for a car, the only thing we assumed was that this is countable, which means I could write it like this, but I can find an element in the set that's not in this list. Thus, R is bigger, bigger than the set of natural numbers. Okay, now what I've kind of alluded to all the way through this part of the lecture is I'm talking about sizes of sets. That is making references to the how large sets are or one set being larger than another. We really need some more um, tools, mathematically speaking, to be able to, to talk about one set being larger. We got to be able to talk about the cardinality of a set. And so the next um, video that you're going to see is, it's not me at the board, it's me writing on a, a, a computer tablet screen, but it's still something I need you to watch to learn about how to do or how to understand the concept of cardinality. And that's also where I'm going to talk about the different sizes of infinity. All right? All right, that's all I got.